you're a business that's managing multiple teams, you're gonna to wanna to take advantage of high levels team calendars. And today we're gonna to show you how to set those up from scratch. Make sure you stick around to the end because we're gonna share with you a word that you're gonna text message to the number located below where it's gonna give you access to the templates that we use for the reminders that we're gonna create for these calendars. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up two different team calendars. One we're gonna set up for onboarding and the other one we're gonna set up for sales. So the first thing that has to happen is you're gonna go over on the left hand side, you're gonna to go to my staff and you're gonna make sure that all your team members are fully in here. Now for instance, in here, we want to make sure that the user has a calendar already configured. And as you can see, if they don't, then you got to go back and set integrations up. So the most important thing is, remember, they have to go log into their profile, go in, make sure that they have their Google Calendar integrated or their Outlook Calendar integrated, and then you'll see the calendar configuration right down here. In my example, since if you come in here and you go to calendar configurations, as you can see, I already have my calendars configured right in here. Now the user has to do this uh, or you're going to have to get access to their Google Calendar in order for you to integrate because if it's not integrated, then there's no way you're going to be able to do this. I'm going to come back over here. I'm going to ensure that all these different individuals have their Google Calendar integrated. If not, then they're not going to get reminders. It's not going to go on their Google Calendar and this technically won't work well. So now that I've checked that all the calendars are assigned and I went back and I integrated all their calendars, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm gonna go over into my calendar settings. I'm gonna create my first group. We're gonna call this uh, the sales team. The description is, this, and just call my company name. So we would just say, this is Rapid Active Media here. I would do RAM ST for sales team. Hit save. Give us some acronyms, great. Now that I've created the group of the calendars that I want in there, I'm gonna create my seams to calendar. Now, uh, we're gonna add a few people, right? So the first person I got is myself. I'm the better seller, so I'm gonna give myself the higher priority. Again, connect my Google Meet, and I'm ready to go. I'm then gonna assign Andy, who is a pretty decent seller, so I'm gonna give a medium priority because I wanna make sure that if Nuno's available versus Andy, that Nuno takes a little bit more just because he closed a little bit better. And I'm gonna go ahead and set Google Meet. Now, if they both sell incredibly well and you wanna make sure you're being equally fair, uh, you can either both set them at a high priority or medium priority, it doesn't really honestly matter, or set up to equal optimization and then uh, equal distribution, and then it's gonna automatically try to always uh, flip between the two individuals based on their availability. For instance, in this situation, I do want a little bit more higher priority on me, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make this uh, the way that this calendar is gonna be set up. This is how the clients are gonna see the name, so I'm gonna put RAM uh, introductory call, or free audit or consultation, whatever you want to call it, that's going to be appeasing to the customer. And then uh, I would put it in here, okay? And then it would be discovery. All right, contact name, I want to make sure we have it. And then we're going to put a little discovery call in there. And we're going to make this red because we want to make sure it stands out because this is going to be super important. Notice that we both have our Google Meet set. Well, what if Andy had, you know, a particular connect, a Zoom instead? You would do Zoom. You would connect, you would make sure Andy has his Zoom already connected again through his profile in the previous video that we shot, and then it would automatically go there. If you just wanted to put his link in here and you don't want it randomly changing or Zoom setting up and creating a new link every time, you would grab his link or he would give it to you and you would put the link in there. And worst case scenario, if it was a different location altogether where it's just a phone call, then you would just leave this as custom as empty and it wouldn't be a problem there. Delete, make a mistake, need to add more, you would hit add new user, and then you would hit the trash cans in between. And then from here, I'm gonna go ahead and hit save and continue. Our hours of taking these sales calls are gonna be Monday through Friday, we are gonna get, we are gonna give ourselves a break at 12 where we can eat lunch. All right, let's change that to PM, and let's change this to one, and let's change this to 12. I'm gonna keep the slot interval to 30 minutes, the, the slot duration to 30 minutes, because that's usually what the sales call will, will take. Now, appointments per slot, I leave that as one. Uh, the only time you would do more than one, like for instance, a chiropractor office likes to overload uh, like two to three appointments in the same calendar slot because it'll just put people in different rooms. That's the only time I've actually seen multiple appointment slots per person work because if you click over this little question mark, it says maximum number of appointments permitted per slot for the user. Meaning if I'm a user and I say I can take two appointments at the same time, 
what will happen is it's going to give me two appointments at the same time. It's just not going to work out well. Either switches over to the next user in the round robin queue or marks the slot unavailable, but that's when the limit is reached. So for instance, if I put two there, it will book two appointments on me. And then after I see those two appointments, then it will book to the next person in the round robin queue, which will be Andy in this particular case. Only time I've ever seen this work is when somebody is working in office and they're putable in room or they're trying to get everybody into one coordinated Zoom call, which then at that point in time, you would go back to the team event here. You would not, you would not have a Google Meet. You would have, let's say, like a custom Zoom meeting and you would put one link for the Zoom meeting like that. Everybody would just be joining the same Zoom link over and over again. Again, super tricky. I haven't seen it used a lot, but that's the only two scenarios that I've seen this actually used. Minimal scheduling notice, I'm gonna do six. Left of my availability with one hour breaks for both Andy and I. And we take all these calls on every day except Friday. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit save and continue. We don't have a particular form in this situation, but if it was like, let's say a sales call and you wanted to get a little bit more information, you would just do any normal form you would. It would be your discovery call form. And then that discovery call form will be there. Again, let the calendar auto confirm, send the appointment alerts to the assigned team member, and then allow a reschedule and cancellation. I will leave that on. So this totally needs to be checked off, which is assigned contacts to the respective calendar team members each time the appointment is booked. If you're running a sales team, this is the only situation where if I was already talking to a contact and they booked on Andy's calendar, I would not want Andy to get them. But there's different ways to control that, so I actually don't recommend ever using this. Uh, because what you can do is uh, when a once a person gets assigned a content, let's say from a lead magnet, you can put settings inside the system where it only, they can only see their assigned contacts right from the lead magnet. And therefore, the situation of them ever booking on uh, a different calendar wouldn't, wouldn't be the situation, right? And so we would just leave that unchecked at this point in time. For sales calls, you usually want to keep a phone. In this situation, we don't. So I'll just take the phone out and I'm going to back that up. And again, we got reschedule and cancel, perfectly fine. And again, we just like to go to a thank you, manager. Thank you, thank you for the appointment request. Uh, look, gonna go ahead and hit complete. Okay, I have my consultation team. And now if I wanted to put this uh, page on an actual funnel, I would just go to any one of my funnels here, click on the actual calendar, and then just switch the calendar over to the free consultation calendar that you see here and it'll automatically populate as you see fit. I also like to create an onboarding team. So now I gotta create a new group for that. So in order for me to create the onboarding team, frame on board, all right? Okay, and again, you, can, you probably want it a little bit simpler, but just to give you an idea. Here, we're gonna have three team members and this is definitely not a priority based thing. It's whoever's available. We wanna make sure that they can onboard. So I'm gonna immediately select equal optimization for equal distribution. I'm gonna add my users. I'm gonna do Esther. I'm gonna do Nuno. We're all gonna use Google Meet. I might use Zoom. Again, you would just change it based on the individual. This is gonna be uh, RAM onboarding. These are usually an hour long. I'm gonna make this purple. Hit save and continue. And then here, these are gonna be an hour. Remember, I always like to leave this as an hour interval. Appointment slots per one. Minimal scheduling notice. We're definitely gonna need about 12 hours on this one, just in case for us to set up and so forth. Uh, we only do onboarding calls on Wednesdays and Thursdays. And again, we wanna give each other an hour break. So I'm gonna come over here, go to 12. And here, we definitely want them to fill out the onboarding form. We, again, all this stays the same. You would get a, a hit assign context to respective calendars. And here, I would actually want them to go to the redirect. Um, I don't remember if we came back to this funnel. I'm just going to go ahead and grab the URL here because I do want them to see a, a video before they onboard. That's going to give them a kind of like next steps of what's going to happen. So I'm going to come over here, click C. And then boom, click that and there you go. And now everything's complete. Now I have an onboarding calendar, I have a sales team calendar, I have my individual calendars. I am fully set in all the calendars I can create. Uh, we went over uh, the different calendar codes that we can embed on the calendar. If I wanted to embed this, let's say on a WordPress, Wix, whatever it is, I would just come over here and get my individual calendar, grab this embed code right here 
copy that to clipboard and then paste this code in uh, any site outside of here. I already showed you how to embed it inside one of these funnel steps. So I hope that you enjoyed that video. And now we're gonna give you that magical word that we talked about, which is gonna be automation. So make sure you put it inside the text message on the number below to get access to the actual templates. That's gonna give you the reminders for these calendars and stay tuned for the next video.